All right, hi everybody. Let's do a really, really brief close to our reconstruction series by discussing how reconstruction formally comes to a close. All right, so I was talking a lot about how the support of reconstruction was waning, which means it was losing support towards the end of this era. And this waning of support is already underway when Grant is president with things like the scandals we just discussed in the part five video. All right, so in this part, let's think about that, right? That's what we mean by Grantism. Also corruption in general within the government. A lot of Northerners and Southerners alike are really frustrated with the government at this point and they don't want to continue with the status quo. They want change. And so some people are actually willing to change their vote and support the Democratic Party or potentially not even vote at all. The Panic of 1873, as we previously discussed, resulted in a six-year economic recession or even a depression. And uh, there's also continued concern because at this point in the 1870s, the United States is continuing to expand west and there's a lot of tension with Indian nations and they're very worried about that and less concerned with what's happening in the south. The federal government overall is experiencing a lot of financial problems. The government is questioning whether it's worth retiring, meaning just getting rid of the $432 million worth of greenbacks that were issued during the Civil War, right? And so the question is, should the war bonds be paid back at all? And if so, should they be paid back in specie or greenbacks, right? So regular, uh, so the hard currency like gold and silver or the, or the soft currency like paper. Sorry about that. I just hit my microphone. All right. So in 1876, the next presidential election, you have the Republican candidate Rutherford B. Hayes and the Democratic candidate Samuel J. Tilden. And in many ways, one of the issues at stake for the election was regionalism, which we also refer to as sectionalism. And one of the concerns, right, is that well, with, the in, with, the, with now, with the 15th Amendment, one of the concerns is that the black vote still is going to have a major influence over either region. At least that's more of the Democratic perspective. And so, of course, the Democratic Party is going to turn out pretty significantly in this election. And we can see that with the popular vote, which actually sways slightly in favor of the Democratic candidate. So if you're looking at this chart right here, you see immediately, if you look straight to the popular vote, that Tilden, the Democratic candidate, actually won. But if you go up to the electoral vote, you see that it was a tie, right? Actually, not a complete tie, but one electoral vote difference, and it wasn't enough for either candidate to win. So we know what happens there. It's happened before. Then the election goes to the House, right? Or the House ends up discussing who the ideal candidate will be, and then they vote on this, right? And, uh, and Rutherford B. Hayes decides to engage in a compromise in order to seal his victory in this election. So first off, Hayes promises money for Southern internal improvements. And so he says, if I am elected, what he's doing is he's talking to the House of Representatives and he says, if I am elected, then I will make sure that there will be money for the South to rebuild its economy. And I guess the inference there is it will have the money to rebuild a similar structure to the economy that they had prior to the war. And I'll explain why in the future, what I mean by that. Also, he promises non-interference in Southern affairs. So uh, basically uh, more of a hands-off approach to reconstruction. He also promises to remove all the federal troops that remain in the South, which more or less means the end of martial law in the South. And he also promises to appoint at least one Democrat to his cabinet. So even though Hayes was a Republican, he's still granting concessions to the Democratic Party and also to the South so that he will win. This cartoon is indicating the suggestion that this was a corrupt election. Some historians even refer to the Compromise of, of 1877 as another corrupt bargain, if you remember the election of 1824. So continuity and change yet again. These are all political cartoons. I was kind of just going back and forth through them. You can pause, maybe analyze, if you like to do those for DBQ practice. That's Hayes kicking Tilden. Then more of like a 
boo-hoo, sort of a sore winner cartoon. And then ultimately the result, right? Hayes is sworn in as president, and at least as far as historians are concerned, Reconstruction is officially over. Since this video is still relatively short, I wanted to just speak, there's no slide here, about the legacies of Reconstruction. So why is Reconstruction not really the end of the civil rights struggle? Well, of course, it goes without saying that there is a civil rights movement that happens about 90 years after this, right? Actually, more like 70, right? The civil rights movement really starts in the 1950s. We tend to focus more on the 1960s, but it starts before that. Of course, if we point it to the present day, the Black Lives Matter movement also suggests that the status of African Americans was and still is unclear in many people's eyes, right? Of course, constitutionally, they are largely protected, but at the local level, at the district level, and even at the personal level, we could question whether or not that is the case. Uh, just a disclaimer, I know I'm an educator, by no means am I trying to endorse a particular political agenda, but it is Black History Month, and I want to be a little bit partial here and say that it is very important, regardless of where you stand on the political spectrum, to be aware about this era in history. So if you're tuning in as a student who wants to learn more, or just as a civilian who wants to learn more, please don't forget this period of history. There's a reason why I decided to do a six-part series for this. This is something that's very important and something that most textbooks don't talk about in detail. So for your own interest, regardless of what grades you get in your class or what you take away from these videos, please remember the legacy of Reconstruction when you're talking about and thinking about race relations in the United States. And that's it. All right, thanks so much, guys. The next series is going to be looking at westward expansion again and the continued relationship between the United States and Native Americans. So thank you so much. I hope these help you in your studies, and stay tuned for the next series. Thanks.